proper start. As one unified body comes together, an end of one era of another. Twelve years ago, open wheel racing split in Art and the Indy Racing League. The best drivers were racing miles apart. But as the 2008 season begins, these drivers race side by side on the same track, unified toward one championship. Tonight at Homestead, a track known for heart stopping action. Drivers who have spent years on ovals race others who have spent most of their careers on road courses. The world's best open wheel drivers light up the night as one. And under the lights of Homestead Miami Speedway, we welcome you to the 2008 season opener, the first race, the XM Indy 300 at Homestead Miami. We told you about more cars, more stars, 25 in the field tonight, the largest field outside of Indianapolis since the year 2002. And a lot of faces you may not recognize, but we'll introduce you to them as tonight and as the season progresses. Of course, others will be extremely familiar. We welcome you to Firestone Race Day, where we'll get you caught up on what's happened during qualifying last night, and also what you can expect to see through the race tonight. And hello again, everybody. It's so glad to be back with you. And you can feel the electricity here at Homestead, Miami. It's been an eventful off-season. I mean, after all, Elio Castroneves wins Dancing with the Stars. And, of course, you guys do know about Danica and the swimsuit issue. Yeah. And there's also this little thing called unification, where everybody's back together under one umbrella. But there's also a story happening from qualifying. The vision racing duo of Ed Carpenter and A.J. Foyt IV were supposed to start second and third, respectively. But technical violations after qualifying, they're at the back of the field. That means Danica Patrick's going to move up to the outside of the front row. Let's get more from Jack Aroot. Danica, how will moving up to the front row affect your early drive? Well, it's definitely going to, you know, leave a clear track for me to uh, to get through. Um, you know, this is a difficult track anyway, so put, put cars in front of you and it's even more difficult. You know, I think that, uh, you know, it's going to, it's definitely going to pay off for sure. I, I, and I don't know why I'm second, but I'll take it. And I, so you guys at home are saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, you just can't talk to Danica without showing us the swimsuit issue, right? Well, okay, guys. Now, I know you're not listening to my voice from this point forward, but try, because while she was doing the swimsuit issue, of course, Elio Castroneves was doing his best at Dancing with the Stars. Do you know 36 million people watched him win with Julianne Huff in that final? Well, let's get more with the man who's uh, now affectionately known as Twinkle Toes from Brianne Pettigo. Well, he's no longer doing the quick step on the dance floor, but I think he'll be pretty quick out on the racetrack today. Elio, being crowned champion of Dancing with the Stars certainly gave you some serious publicity during the offseason. How has that extra celebrity changed your life? It's great. I hope my race will be like a foxtrot, very smooth, you know, but uh, you know, it was great. I mean, uh, it, it, not only myself, but obviously, I mean, Danica, now with the merge. I mean, you can see that this thing is getting better and better. So uh, I'm so happy that, um, that everything start happening this season. So I always say it's a new beginning of Open Wheel Series. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be fast. I'm ready, man. I think, I, I think you guys saw that I'm ready. Huh? After being just a splash of fuel away from winning the 2007 championship, Scott Dixon starts the 2008 season on the pole here tonight at Miami Homestead Speedway. Eight racers that are rookies in this field today. A lot of guys have not run on an oval before. As the pole sitter, you're going to get to them quickly. How do you handle that traffic? Well, you know, it's 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 going to be kind of one of those things. You're just going to have to decide once you get on it. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that, that haven't maybe raced uh, on an oval, but uh, they've done a lot of racing. They're very competent, and, you know, they're going to put on a good show. But, uh, you know, the thing that we've got to be proud of tonight is, is the unification. All the people that we got out here, you know, you can just feel the buzz around you. It's uh, definitely taking off. But 
I think uh, the guy to watch on the first few laps is going to be my teammate, man. That's going to be pretty impressive from back there. And uh, I know Chip's been trying to calm him down a little bit so he doesn't go too crazy, but it's going to be a good race. Yeah, Target Ganassi drivers bookending the field here tonight with uh, Scott Dixon heading up and uh, Dan Weldon coming from the back. Dixon won this race in 2003. He'll try to do it again tonight, Marty. And when he did that, it was his first IndyCar start back in 2003. Let's talk a little bit more about unification with our expert analyst, Scott Goodyear. This is not going to be instant gratification. It's a building process. It certainly is. And, you know, before the split, open wheel racing was the place that all young drivers wanted to go. That was their destination. Well, in the last 12 years, it's actually become NASCAR. That's where you're finding a lot of these young drivers gravitating towards NASCAR because that's where the salaries are, that's where the sponsors are, that's where the teams are hiring. Well, I think starting tonight with this unification, I think this is going to put open wheel racing back in the map and back in the destination list of a lot of these young drivers. More stars and more cars, and we started off in just a matter of a few moments. We're going to step aside just for a moment, and we'll talk about Dan Weldon. This is what happened to him in qualifying. Remember, he's going for four wins in a row here at Homestead, Miami. Will he be able to do it? He'll have to start from the back, and we'll talk to him when we come back. Stay with us. Racing on TSN is brought to you in part by Honda. Because better technology on the track means better efficiency on the road. Honda's unique rigid steel body structure the beast inside the beauty. Odyssey Pilot Ridgeline Element CRV. The trucks inside a truck. When you have a migraine, don't be afraid of the light. For liquid fast migraine relief, liquid fast Advil. What if rates go up or down? What if both kids want to go to university? Your plan can cover all that. And what about the kitchen renovations? You could afford that. New cabinets. And a pantry. Marble countertop. Granite countertops. How about a breakfast nook? No, no, we're not nook people. So, no nook. A Scotiabank advisor can create a plan that helps you get the upper hand on your home financing. You're richer than you think, Scotiabank. Ready, go. Visit Midas for secure stop brake maintenance, including inspection, adjustments, caliper lubrication, tire rotation, and more for just $39. Trust the Midas Touch. Picks up the victory, an unbelievable finish as Dan Weldon brings it home and delivers for the Andretti Green Team. Who's going to win it? Weldon on the outside, at the stripe, it is Weldon! Weldon won it by 14,000 of a second! Dan Weldon picks up the win! Wow. Start from ninth to second, it'll be his third consecutive win here at Homestead, Miami. Excellent job, boys, excellent job. To score the four Pete tonight, though, guys, he's going to have to start in the back of the pack because of a problem during qualifications last night. The car steps out, and all of a sudden, Dan Weldon finds himself getting a concrete encounter here at Miami Homestead Speedway. For Dan Weldon, though, it's an opportunity that will not go unnoticed. Dan, you'll find yourself in the back of the pack. Where do you want to be after lap 10 tonight? Well, I... Under the boss's instructions, I'm not allowed to be the usual Dan. I have to take it very slow and very patiently. And, you know, that's what I do. I obviously got to thank everybody uh, on, on the number nine car and the number 10 car for working together to get me back out in the spare car with the, with the Honda engine in. Um, but we, we definitely had a very fast race car yesterday, and I'm sure with uh, the way the guys have put this one together, it was going to be good too. So we'll just take it one step at a time. But, you know, I uh, would hope to be up the front relatively quickly. Well, the bad news for Dan is that the farthest back anybody has started is 12th. That was his team in 2003. 
Can he do it, especially with all this young traffic out there? I think he can. You know, Dan is a very dominating driver, and he's very forceful when he goes through traffic, and I think that's why Chip Ganassi hired him. But you know something? Tonight is a whole different race than it's been here any other time, and the most important thing is to have patience. And when Chip Ganassi tells one of his drivers, hey, you can go a little bit slower, that's usually not Chip. So I think he understands how different it is here tonight. A lot of first-time starters here at Homestead this time, and a lot of first-time oval drivers. That's going to be important. Let's show you a graphic that'll uh, bear that point out. Take a look. The top four on this list have never been on an oval in a race until tonight. And there you can see Will Power, Justin Wilson. And don't expect a lot. We're not putting any pressure on these guys. They just need to finish this race. They said 11 drivers here tonight. Marty, this is our first start here at Homestead. Well, guess what? It's time to get it all going. Let's go trackside for those four famous words in motorsports. Whew, I'm excited. Hope you are too. Race fans, are you ready? The time is now for the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome back for the command, three doors down. Drivers, start your engines. See the look in some of those eyes. 25 engines come to life here at Homestead Miami Speedway. And in a moment, this new era of open wheel racing will officially begin. Take a look at our XM starting grid across the top of your screen. And we would have been talking and touting the great run by Ed Carpenter and A.J. Foyt the fourth because they should have been second and third. But as you've already heard, they are at the back of the field. So uh, they will be at the tail end of this 25 car pack along with Dan Weldon. So that is going to be very interesting to see how he can work his way up and how those two can work their way through this field. There's an example of our 360 degree onboard camera. First time it's ever been used in any form of motorsports. We won't make you this dizzy during the race, we promise, but uh, it gives us some great shots and there's exactly what it looks like on top of the car. And it's actually much smaller than uh, last year's unit, which had a big old wing to it. And uh, that is very compact. And there they go, rolling out onto the track. Let's take a look at our six onboard cameras in high definition. The whole season will be in HD, and boy, it is crisp and clear. Justin Wilson, one of the transition drivers coming over from Champ Car. Elio Castroneves, Danica Patrick, Scott Dixon, Dan Weldon in the back. That's going to be fun. And Tony Kanaan. That is our starting grid across the top. You've seen it once. If you notice, Graham Rahal is not in the field. The 19-year-old is right up there on top of the press box. There he is. He had an unfortunate crash uh, standing next to uh, Dad Bobby. There he is. He's going to be taking care of his team. But he's up there to learn. Uh, the car stepped out on him. He hit the wall in turn two in Tuesday. They didn't have enough parts to uh, get going. So uh, he will be racing next week at St. Petersburg. Let's get our final story from Pitt Road first. And uh, Vince, what's up? Well, Marty, of the teams that are making the transition from Champ Car to the IndyCar Series, Frank Pereira of Conquest Racing qualified best, 15th fastest on the speed chart. Eight teams have come over, uh, representing eight drivers here in this field tonight, many of whom have never raced on an oval. To a man, they say the goal is simply to finish the race, load the car up on one piece, learn everything you can learn, and call it a victory. Brian Pettigo? Well, for a driver, there's very few things that are more frustrating than being sent to the back of the pack. And for Vision Racing Z, Carpenter and A.J. Boyd the fourth, that's exactly what happened. It's not just frustration that's going to be pushing them forward, though. It's a feeling of they've got something to prove now. But Larry Curry told me just before he came out to the grid, Tony Stewart sent him a text message, said, Larry, it's always more fun to come from the back. Jack? Well, we had the off season has been filled with a lot of things away from the racetrack. For Marco Andretti, it was turning 21, but he says it's the longest off season. Why? Because finally last year, if you remember right here, some 20 minutes into the race here, 
the car went away and it said it almost killed him. That just started a sophomore season that was pathetic. Marco Andretti said, I couldn't wait to get back in the cockpit here and get rid of that 600 pound gorilla. He says, I'm no longer a sophomore. I want to go racing, guys. All right, thanks, Jack. Brianne mentioned the uh, text message uh, that the, the team got from Tony. We got a message from uh, Rusty Wallace. He's watching up at Daytona. He says, I wish I was there. I want to see 25 cars at one time. Glad to have you on board, Rusty. Let's talk about the race analysis. Well, rookies are going to be the big thing on everybody's mind here this evening, certainly because we have eight of them. And like we said, a lot of them without any oval experience or racing here at night. Fuel strategy, well, Honda's given back the adjustable fuel trim to the teams, five different positions, and and then they have an opportunity to run under green or yellow or three different lean settings. And last lap, last turn, guys, it always comes down to that here at Homestead, Miami. Set your car up for that last lap because it's going to be exciting. On the right is Dan Weldon. He'll be starting way back in the back. You can see the pace car has peeled off. Get ready, folks. The new era is coming out of turn four. And the IndyCar Series for 2008 is green. No, they waved it off. They waved it off. And I think, Marty, because the field really here is broken up, you've got a big group of cars going in through turns one and two, and then we have a lot of cars straggling in the back section, and the president of the league, Brian Barnhart, really doesn't like to have cars spread out like that because it really can make a slingshot effect for the cars in the back of the field. He wants to see them all bunched up about 55 to 70 feet between the rolls, nice and neat. The pace setter, Scott Dixon, has to bring them up to the front here. All has to be smooth. Dixon has to be the first one across the line. Dixon picking up the pace again, coming through turn four. Danica Patrick a little slow on the throttle. As we come down towards the start, will we go green? We are green at Homestead Miami. You have Dan Weldon on the right-hand side of your screen now. Remember, he started at the back because of a qualification crash. Watch him just continue to work the high side, put his experience to use. Everybody makes it clean through turn one and two. You see all the sparking. That's from the full fuel loads. You get a face full of sparks if you're trailing. Look at Dan Weldon picking them off. End of lap one, it's Scott Dixon, Danica Patrick, Tony Kanaan, Marco Andretti, and Ryan Briscoe, your top five. But look at Weldon, he is charging through the field. He is up to 19th already. This is what we say, pardon me, excuse me, I'm coming through. Now all these drivers know he started in the back of the field, so they will hear from their spotters and also be looking in their mirrors knowing that he is on his way. Dan is the man of the moment now. So much for paces. He is already up to 16, picked up three more spots. Look at Weldon over on the right, coming up on Oriel Servia. There you can see Weldon from both angles. Jack, you've got more? Yeah, this run from the back is contrary to what Chip Ganassi had counseled his driver. You heard Dan Weldon tell me before the start of the race that he and his car owner had huddled. Ganassi told me he talked to his driver over and over again and said, we have a car that is capable of winning, but you don't need to go to the front right away. Weldon argued that with these newcomers, he needed to get by them as quickly as possible. Ganassi has been watching on board the camera, and he hasn't smiled yet. And we've got a battle for the lead now. Tony Kanaan had gotten around. Danica Patrick about a lap and a half ago. And here we go, side by side, about three is the part. Dixon holds on to the lead, but Tony wants it. You and I both jumped at the same time there, Marty. They almost rub wheels at 210 miles an hour. Well, and Danica and Marco are having their own battle back uh, for third place behind all this. Remember, this is a fight against teams right now. Target Chip Ganassi up in the front with Scott Dixon and Andretti Green Racing with Tony Kanon. And this is really Tony Kanon's hometown race now, Marty, because he lives close by in Miami. Take a look at this wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. This brings back memories of a two years ago when it was the last 10 laps, when it was Weldon holding off Elio Castroneves. We're already just early in this thing. Well, not only I'm thinking of that, but as a previous driver, I'm thinking about the first race of the season. You want to get some cobwebs off because you've not raced since September. But these guys will have none of that because they're going back to last year's form already. You can see the battle shaping up behind these two. Tony has sort of fallen back into place now, about a car length and a half behind Scott Dixon. We're making these laps at 210 miles an hour. Remember, the pole speed was 213. 
Now what Tony will do is sit back and sort of watch Scott Dixon's car as we see the race right now going off for third place. Ryan Briscoe in the Penske machine and Marco Andretti in the 26. And if you're saying what happened to Danica Patrick, she has fallen back to sixth place. Elio Castroneves has gotten around Danica as well. Now remember, Briscoe is his first race in the IndyCar for team owner Roger Penske. Because he's now trying to have a look at what's going on here. Remember, Sam Hornish won in his debut here for Roger Penske back in 2004. Now in the backstretch, Tony Kanaan's going to take another look to the outside. You're on board. Not going to get it done. Seems like he's got a little bit understeer mid-turn. You can see him really dial a lot of steering into the steering wheel, and the car seems to lose some RPM. It just sounds like it starts to burn some speed off in mid-turn, as we call it. That white car you saw coming out of pit lane was Jay Howard, and he had made an unscheduled stop. He had a crash yesterday in qualifying, bruised his knees very badly. Uh, they did get the car back together. He did start the race, but obviously had to go in for an adjustment. He is two laps down. Take a look now as we get back to Dan Weldon. Guess what, folks? It's taken him 11 laps to get up into the 10th position. This reminds me of last year when he was, what, nine? Picked up nine places in about four laps. Very dominating performance last year, as you mentioned earlier. And you know something? A very driven driver, very focused, and all he wants to do is get up to the front. He can see that. He can taste it. He can smell it. That's where he wants to be. Jack and Root, you have more? Scott, in fact, throughout the course of practice, the one thing that this team worked on, they said it was the key to their last success last year, was to be able to run flat out. Dan Weldon and his team and the engineers had worked to do just that. They said they might not be as fast as they wanted, but they wanted to be able to do that in traffic. Meanwhile, up front, we've got a nifty battle, guys, with his teammate. <laughs> it is uh, Tony Kanan sticking his nose in front of the number nine of Scott Dixon, but here comes Dixon right back. Not for very long. It looks like Dixon's car works a little bit in the middle of the turns of Tony, but Tony got the Whoa, run. Oh, look at that. Going around lap traffic there. It looked like it might have been Frank per Carrera's car. No, Mario Morais. That was Mario Morais that just went a lap down. And they are flying. They're running at 209. Mario is at about 193. That's why he got the lap pretty quickly there. All right, so we're going to uh, set things up for you here. It's Tony Kanaan, Scott Dixon, Marco Andretti's in third. Elio Castroneves is now fourth. And Ryan Briscoe rounds out your top five after 13 exciting laps here at the exit Indy 300. And Dan Weldon, well, he is working his way up through the field. He's now up to ninth. We're going to go side by side. You won't miss a thing. Especially formulated with active cleansing agents to continuously help prevent dirt and deposits from forming. No leading conventional oil helps keep engines clean. So change with Penn's oil and feel the clean. Not just oil, Penn's oil. I'm Joanne Roberts and I'm a piano teacher. A rock had chipped my windshield and it had spread right across the driver's side. Did you know you had a crack in your windshield? Oh. Apple Autoglass took care of everything. They certainly know what they're doing. Apple Canada's local autoglass experts. Singles or doubles? Singles? Doubles? Singles? <laughs> doubles! Singles! Prepare to be torn. The Cheeseburger Lovers Deal at DQ. Two cheeseburgers for $2.99 or two meaty double cheeseburgers for $4.99. Do them. Tomorrow, 
He's back, and he's on TSA. That's just beautiful! Sid the Kid and the Pens take on the Rangers in the first half of a home-and-home. -home. Rangers, Penguins. Tomorrow, 12.30 Eastern, it's the NHL on TSA. Back here at Homestead Miami Speedway, as you see downtown Miami, that's actually looking more like Miami Beach. And uh, there is Buddy Rice, as he has moved up to the 11th position right now. We're under caution. He's uh, missing a mirror, and that's probably the reason we have the caution, because that's the piece of debris out on the track. We should update you the Tony Kanaan. You saw it in Side by Side, the only motorsport series that gives you that luxury. You didn't miss it. The Tony went around Scott Dixon to take the lead. We've had our first lead change there. And we can also update you, Dan Weldon is running ninth. Ed Carpenter, who started back in 24th, is now running 10th. And his teammate, A.J. Foyt the fourth, who started 25th, is up to 12th. So those three guys are all on the move. And as... Uh, the Firestone and the Honda Pace Car makes its way around. There is the number nine of Scott Dixon. That is lap traffic in front of him. That's Ernesto Vizo, uh, one of our transition drivers coming over from Champ Car. He's just been put one lap down. He's in 21st position. And then as uh, we swing all the way around, you can see the cars behind him. Uh, hearing the word, the pit lane is open. So we're going to have some takers here early as it looks like everybody on lap number 19 is uh, gonna bring everybody in. So let's get set up for our ethanol triple pits and uh, Jack Root, they're gonna be coming your way first. 60 mile an hour speed limit led by Tony Kanan coming down off of the pit road lane and onto pit road they come. Scott Dixon directly, as you see, on board with getting ready for this pit stop. They're all the way guys down the end of this long pit road. It looks like feeding time at the zoo right now. On the top of the screen, Tony Kanan in the middle, Scott Dixon and Marco Andretti. Andretti likes his car thus far. Kanan, it looks like they all three will be nominal pit stops. It'll be a case of who'll be able to get the work done. Who will be able to drop the hammer to take the lead back. It's going to be, looks like yes, indeed. It was a drag race, guys. Back out another pit, off the pit road. And we've got one car that has stalled coming down pit road. And trying to find out who it is, it is the 27 of Hideki Muto. And Muto missed his pit, and I'm not sure uh, if he's going to be able to get it fired. As uh, back out on the track, it is Scott Dixon taking the race lead again over Tony Kanan. So we'll step aside, side by side, as we continue under our first yellow. feels you feel and when it's running clean you feel it that's why Pennzoil motor oil is specially formulated with active cleansing agents to continuously help prevent dirt and deposits from forming no leading conventional oil helps keep engines clean so change with Pennzoil to feel the clean not just oil Pennzoil there's something about the freshness of Ireland that brings out the lasses. Now it comes in a body wash from Irish Spring. Smell like you're worth exploring. Long-lasting Irish Spring body wash. Add a little Irish to your game. At Infinity, we anticipate that you will constantly be surrounded by things you'll need to avoid. Introducing the all-new Infinity EX, the world's first around-view monitor. Ordinary is seeing behind you. Extraordinary is seeing around you. The all-new EX from Infinity. 12 state lines, 47 red pickup trucks, and three bouncy things. One great place to start counting sheep. Super 8, now with free high-speed internet, free breakfast, and more. Super 8, see you along the way. Not a moment, let's get the opinions of the drivers on what this unification of both open-wheel series means to them. The good news about the Morge now 
now I'm not the oldest driver in the series. So I'm so happy. <laughs> if you would ask me, it should have happened a while back. It never should have split. So I think there's definitely going to be a transition period in the beginning where it's probably, it's going to be a little messy. It's more difficult and complicated for us than for IndyCar drivers. We all going to have to work, including the drivers. Make those top 10s, top 15s, top 5s even more prestigious. That's the greatest thing about it now, you know, you can say I do IndyCar and that's, that's the only one series. And there is Tony George, the head man of the Indy Racing League, and doing double duty because uh, obviously he is the owner of Vision Racing, and you're saying, well, obviously there's no favoritism because it was the two Vision cars that were penalized for the infractions in qualifying that went to the back of the pack. All right, and there is one of them on the left. That's uh, Ed Carpenter in the Menards, number 20. And after pit stops, he is up to eighth right now as we are getting ready, apparently, to go back to green flag racing here at Homestead, Miami. It'll be Scott Dixon, Tony Kanaan, Elio Castroneves, his teammate Ryan Briscoe, Marco Andretti, then Ryan hunter Ray is up to sixth, Danica Patrick is seventh, and we're back to green. Got a lot of sparks from one car. It looks like maybe a tire going down. I don't know, Scott. It looks like Will Power possibly because the car is actually just dragging itself on the ground. Justin Wilson right now, the O2 that you're on board with, is looking at the car to the right now with both those cars being so slow. Maybe they touched on the restart. We'll have to get a report on that. I think there may have been some contact as uh, you can see now, Scott Dixon is in front of Elio Castroneves, Tony Kanaan, Danica Patrick is on the move. She has gotten around Marco Andretti up to six. Ryan hunter Ray has also gotten around Marco, so he's dropped two positions. Well, her car is working because she's able to keep it on the low side and keep her foot on the gas. This as a driver, you're hoping that they made the great changes for it, either with wing adjustments or tire pressure to get the car working as quickly as you want it to. Now, when she drives along, if she's got understeer, she'll turn that wheel so much she'll scrub speed off down the middle of the turn. But we'll have to see if the car is going to work better for her as the laps continue here. Take a look as they come down the backstairs. Here comes Marco trying to make it three wide. Let's get an update uh, from uh, Vince Welch in the pits. Yeah, the O2 car of Justin Wilson is, uh, had suffered a flat right rear, so he had to come in. That might have caused the tangle up with uh, Will Power. They changed it and off he goes. And we're getting word that Will Power is also in pit lane and it looks like his night is already over. So a tough break for Will Power in his debut in the IndyCar Series season opener. So Danica Patrick right now in fifth. And let's get an update from Jack Aroot. From the drop of the green flag, guys, Danica Patrick has been playing complaining of understeer. He made a tire pressure adjustment and tried to make a slight wing adjustment to see if it would get any better. Keep in mind that all the practice and preparation for this race was done in the heat of the day. There were no night practices, so this has been a shot in the dark as Danica Patrick works over her teammate number 26 that of course is marco andretti he also made a wing adjustment and he was complaining of understeer as well and guess who is right behind danica patrick the number 10 of dan weldon that's right he has worked his way up to seven he's lapping faster than anybody else 211.8 miles an hour and here he comes on the outside of danica and you know there's no love loss between danica patrick and dan weldon they've had their spats before both on and off the racetrack she knows she can't do anything about it dan just too fast she goes by and that's going to be one mad Danica Patrick inside that cockpit Marty so Weldon up to six here we are working lap 31 of 200 and who knows maybe Weldon may rewrite the history books yet tonight here at Homestead Miami Speedway he is on the move and you saw Danica and also Marco Andretti making the Dan Weldon go high to go around the high side the longest way and maybe push him up into the gray throughout the turn but he just seems to be able to take that on and continue moving forward. Meanwhile, Scott Dixon continues to lead over Elio Castroneves. The margin is three-tenths of a second. That's what it looks like on the racetrack. Back to third is Tony Kanaan. Here comes uh, Weldon looking to the outside again, and Marco makes that car pretty wide. He moves it up, but he's also moving because traffic's just further up in front of him, and that's the thing that you have to watch when you're doing all this lapping that we talk about. And Ricky Bernaldi was actually on the low side, so he had to move up the racetrack. We told you that Will Power is out of the race. Vince Welch is caught up with him. Will, exactly what happened there on the track? Uh, I think I just I hit Wilson's back wheel and uh, bent my front suspension. Yeah, so sort of disappointing for the Aussie Vineyard number eight to uh, finish this early, but. Uh, uh, it's racing. What was your impression?
impression of the short time out in the racing? Oh well, yeah, I was, I was enjoying it. It was a lot of fun and we were sort of just taking our time and learning about following cars and um, yeah, I mean, we just uh, had a little understand, but it was fun. Marty? All right, and uh, we'll see Will on the road course, the street course at St. Petersburg next Sunday and guarantee you all those transition guys coming over, they have a lot of experience. As uh, we should tell you, uh, while this is going on, uh, Hideki Muto has gone back into pit lane, so the rookie has uh, got some more troubles. Meanwhile, as we look further back, let's check in on Ed Carpenter. He is there, and it's not hard to miss. I mean, <laughs> that bright Menards yellow, Ed will be running those colors. He's in ninth place right now. His teammate, A.J. Foyt, the fourth, is in tenth. Let's get an update from Brianne Pettigo. Marty, a lot of off-season homework is really paying off for this mission team. They spent a lot of time in the wind tunnel, a lot of time doing research and development, and it's already proven uh, helpful for Ed Carpenter, who's moved up because of a pit stop, that the crew has all been enrolled in the pit fit program. They're all working out in the gym. This team is really benefiting from doing their off-season homework. All right, thank you, Brienne. Let's take a look at the biggest movers. Weldon from 22nd up to 6th. He's got 16 spots. Carpenter and Foyt, 15 spots each, as they are now 9th and 10th. Says a lot for those teams. Ed Foyt just went around his teammate, Ed Carpenter. As you were mentioning that, it seems like Ed Carpenter's car is starting to fall off the speed category just a little bit as the four Vitor mirror now goes underneath him. And certainly he's got to make some adjustments either the next pit stop or maybe some adjustments inside the cockpit, Marty, with some tools that he has to improve that car. As you take a look at our race leader, Scott Dixon, his lead is about two, three car lengths, uh, but we've got a report that there may have been a little contact between Tony Kanaan and Elio Castroneves. Let's take a look. Tony Kanaan on the high side, the number 11 car. She's riding along now with Elio Castroneves on the low side. And look at this. They both want the same piece of real estate. They're marking oh. it, yes. Oh, man, that could oh, man, at 210 miles an hour. They won't want to do that very often. Woo! That will stop your heart. And that's at over 210 miles an hour. And whoa, Dixon was under attack by Elio all of a sudden. I think the lap traffic may have uh, slowed him up for a moment, opening the door, but Elio was not able to get the job done. We're working lap 39 of 200. Scott Dixon's got his hands full. Elio Castroneves is back there lurking, as is Tony Kanaan, Ryan Briscoe, and Marco Andretti, with Dan Weldon now running in sixth. We're gonna step aside, you'll go side by side. With available 268 horsepower, ultra-low emissions, and Honda's reputation for safety, it's not just a powerful car, but a powerful statement. Introducing the all-new 2008 Accord from Honda. A new level of exhilaration. A new level of Accord. It has a 6-liter, 48-valve V12 engine with 510 horsepower. Electronic active roll suspension. Custom leather seats with six levels of massage. A voice command navigation system. And it all means nothing. Unless you have the right tires. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. At Desert Dan General Insurance, we've never claimed to have invented direct car insurance. But just because something's been invented, do you stop there? I should be in Toronto in a week and a half. We knew we could do much better. To us, a true direct structure means that low prices stay low. And with our 24-hour claim service, all claims are handled quickly and efficiently. Call or click on Desert Dan General Insurance. Insurance improved. While the action continues here, let's talk about opening night of Major League Baseball Sunday night on ESPN. The Atlanta Braves take on the Washington Nationals. First game ever at Nationals Park. Opening night baseball built by the Home Depot on ESPN tomorrow night at 8 Eastern. All right, let's uh, get you caught up. Scott Dixon still in the race lead by a second now over Elio Castroneves. But while we were side by side, you saw Dan Weldon get around Ryan Briscoe. He is now in the top five. 
Marty, as you know, there's no lack of confidence when it comes to Dan Weldon. Before the car rolled off the tech sh uh, sled today, he went to each and every member of his crew. He thanked them for their support and for their hard work overnight. He told them, my only hope is that I can pay you back tonight with a run to the front. Brianne, it looks like that's what he's doing right now. Well, Ed Carpenter is struggling right now in turns three and four. Earlier, he was complaining of an understeer. That's becoming more apparent in the car in turns three and four. That's not the only problem. He says his tires are in desperate need of changing. He said he can make it, but it won't be pretty. Well, he has dropped now down to 12th. So after being as high as ninth place, uh, he finds himself falling back, as you described, because of the tire situation. And when the tires start to go off, it's simply from the fact that they're losing their adhesion, they're losing their grip. Firestone Firehawks are great tires, but if you've used them or abused them just a little bit too hard because the car handling might not be good, then they start to lose their adhesion, or what they call the prime part of the adhesion, Marty, and you just start to lose maybe about two miles an hour. But that was only 28 laps ago when he came in for the stop, so uh, obviously something is going on there. We'll see if it... Uh, rears its ugly head with uh, anybody else out there. Meanwhile, let's check in once again with our race leader, Scott Dixon, because now he's starting to open the gap. It's up to 1.6 seconds over Elio Castroneves as uh, the run's starting to slow down now. He's running at 2.09. Remember when they first came out with those fresh tires, they were up around 2.11. Well, what he notices now is that his car is better on long runs. When the tires get warm, they get hot, the fuel starts to deplete in the fuel tank, and the car starts to get a little bit lighter. So this is something to watch for close to the end of the race. If it's a long run, he knows his car can be very strong. How will it be on a restart? That remains to be seen, and that's what drivers look for. Restarts, how's the car working? Long runs, how the car working? The other guys, like Elio, has to report back and say, hey, this is what's going on with my race car. Once I get 10 or 15 laps on it, what can you do to help me? Help me with tire pressures, help me with wing angles. The engineers are busy working in the pit lane right now trying to figure that out for them. Well, we should also update you, Bruno Junquera, who has raced four times at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the 500. He is out of his race car for Dale Coyne Racing, uh, listed in 23rd place. They have pulled that car behind the wall. So uh, we have three cars in the pits or behind the wall right now. 25 vehicles started this race tonight. A lot more drivers out there, a lot more people that may not be familiar with. So we asked uh, Tony Kanan, Danica Patrick, what's it gonna be like out there with all that traffic? with more cars are just that there are usually well more accidents um, there is more lap traffic um, there's more unexpected things that happen um, and you know with more cars you tend to have different experience levels within I think it's gonna change the way we set up our cars for the race because you're probably gonna be lapping more cars you have more disturbance in the air even if you're not lapping the cars because you have more motion around the oval especially on the oval what, would, what do you think? What, what's the transition well, I think like? the biggest thing for all these drivers here today, it's obviously the speed, it's the high banks that they have to run at, it's the constant pounding at 210 miles an hour, the mental, physical conditioning they have to have for that. But the biggest thing I think also that we haven't spoke about is that all the IRL drivers that have been doing this for years are used to having somebody speak in their ear, the spotters that are up on the grandstands. Well, all these drivers that are coming over here now have to go out there and drive the race car and start to get used to the spotter telling them someone's looking high, someone's looking low, clear on the high side, and it's very draining for you when you go and do it for the very first time. There you see Marco Andretti dueling with his teammate Tony Kanaan. Marco gets around him. That will be for third position. While all this is going on, Vince Welch has caught up with Bruno Junquera. Bruno Junquera just wanted to have a good, balanced race car tonight to finish, but you're not able to do so. What was the problem? The car after 10 laps got really, really loose, so I couldn't drive. We stopped, we'd make a change, but still way loose. And I am no slap getting lapped all the time. And it's very easy, very easy to crash. And I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm being a traffic for everybody in the race. So I think it's better to stop. Uh, the team, Z-Line team, did a good job to put the car uh, together for the race, but they're not ready yet. It's gonna be very simple. Marty, 
Well, and, and that's what we talked about at the beginning here. Every one of these teams wanted to put these cars back on the trailer in one piece because they have no backup, they have no spares. They crash here, it's like Graham Rahal. You're done until the next race, until you get it fixed. You know, you talk about a loose race car, that's when the back end wants to swap around on you, which is exactly what happened to Dan Weldon in the qualifying run. So a very smart driver, very experienced driver, he knows when to bring it into the pit lane and just say that's the day. Take a look at Marco Andretti in the 26 car. He is uh, trying to move around and does get around. Elio Castroneves is now up to second place. And that means only Scott Dixon is uh, left for him to go after. And there he is. You can see Scott with the two lap vehicles on the high side. Dixon is down low, as is Marco Andretti. And as you see all the cars fly by the finish line, there is your top five after 56 of 200 go side by side and Scott Dixon in control so far as uh, he has led 49 of those laps so far does he win his second race ever here at Homestead Miami Proactive Solution has good news if you have a difficult pimple or sudden breakout and are looking for relief. Because when you order now, you'll get the exclusive refining mask free with your three-piece kit. Just a dab, and the mask is designed to zap problems it's fast. It's dramatic. I put it on in the evening before I go to bed, and I was happy with how it made my skin look. That's a good feeling. I can tell it works. I know it works, and it's definitely my favorite product. Call now and order Proactive Solution to help clear your acne and help prevent future breakouts. And now you'll save 50% on Proactive, just $19.95 Canadian. That's right, Proactive is now available in Canadian dollars. For on-the-spot pimple control, I use the refining mask. Just a little dab, that's all you need. It's Proactive's hottest product, and it's part of Proactive's best offer. So don't just dream of clear, beautiful skin, make it real. Order now by calling the number on your screen or order online at proactivesolution.ca. So I can get two mouthwatering cheeseburgers for $2.99? Or I can sink my teeth into two meaty double cheeseburgers for $4.99? They're both such great deals. I mean, which one should I get? The singles? The doubles? The singles? What are you doing? Prepare to be torn. The Cheeseburger Lovers Deal at DQ. Two cheeseburgers for $2.99 or two double cheeseburgers for $4.99. Do them. And finish off with a Kit Kat Blizzard treat. Where is this place exactly? It's about as far from Disneyland as you can possibly get. Newfoundland and Labrador. I've got you under my skin. From the same hands and minds to craft the most dependable, longest lasting, full size pickups on the road comes the 2008 North American Car of the Year. The totally new Chevrolet Malibu. And I've got you under my skin. Is the leader right now. If he wins the race, he wins the title. We're back to green flag racing. Two laps, three miles remain here at Chicago Land Speedway. White flag will be displayed the final lap of the 2007 season. The championship at stake. Dixon by a half a car length. Dario swings it wide. Dixon is out of fuel. Dario Franchitti's going to win the race and the championship. Yeah. Scott Dixon runs out of fuel for the final lap of the race. And Scott Dixon's got his hands full with traffic, and that's Marco Andretti on the high side in the 26, going to try and take the lead from him. Here comes more lap traffic. You're on board with Dixon. The man who finished second in the championship chase last year, he just needed about a glass full of ethanol to make it finish in front, or he just needed the race to be one lap shorter. Marty, we just saw a very mature Marco Andretti at the 
you know, 65, 66 lap of this race, make a very smart decision, get out of the throttle because he was getting pinched down from the traffic up above and just follow him behind Scott Dixon. Maybe a couple of years ago, you wouldn't have seen that. He would have pushed the issue, tried to make it three wide, but he realizes that it's gotta be all the way to 200 laps, 300 miles here, which is that move will give him the victory. Well, you gotta remember that uh, this is his third trip here to Homestead, Miami, and he has yet to finish at this racetrack. Last year, the car was uh, so unmanageable, he parked it. Let's take a look at our Firestone lap leaders. Two guys have led. Scott Dixon has been the majority of those uh, for 59, and Tony Kanaan has led for eight. Let's get more on Jackaroo. Well, Scott, Scott Dixon has been warned about Marco Andretti for the last 15 laps, all the way when Marco was running in the fourth position. Now, what has changed for Marco Andretti from that disastrous sophomore season? Well, how about his crew chief, the man that calls the tactics? Ziggy Hardness has been hired by Andretti Green Racing. Ziggy, who is an Indy 500 champion in his own right, with Al Unser Jr., has come over to the team for the first time. He's calling the shots for the young Andretti, who, by the way, scored his 21st birthday just one week ago. They're looking out for Marco Andretti, target Chip Canasta Racing. Meanwhile, his teammate, Tony Kanan, is coming down on the pit road. He'll be the first of the Andretti green cars to make a pit stop. He ran well in the early going, but then faded back. All of the cars have been battling with a slight understeer. They've been adding wing. Let's see if Tony Kanan will do that when he comes in to take on the crew of the ethanol and the Firestone Firehawk tire. A wing adjustment is made. Still trying to put more grip on the front. Meanwhile, up front, there's a battle for the lead, guys. It certainly is, but Marco Andretti's going to peel off from that battle for the lead because he needs to come in. Remember, we talked about the pit window. Tony made it 50 laps. Marco's made it 51 since his last stop. Looks like his teammate, uh, Hideki Muto, is a little slower coming into pit lane. This could cost him dearly. Well, the four car is directly in front of Marco Andretti right now, Vitor Mir, and Vitor didn't seem to come in off the pit entrance lane as quick as maybe he could have. Well, it could have slowed maybe a second or two for Marco Andretti. Let's watch Marco stop now, see if there's going to be any wing changes up the front. Jack? They made a major wing adjustment the last time. So going to make that adjustment this time. Marco Andretti was in a big hurry. He was told to hold in his pit box, and he did not. There is a perfect example of problems. Meanwhile, Scott Dixon is pulling down your leader. Danica Patrick is in as well, making a major wing adjustment. So far for Scott Dixon, nothing has been required. It's been nominal all the way. The fuel man goes to work. It's a 360 camera shows. The clock is ticking away. These green fly pit stops will make the difference. A Let's go to Brianne Pedigo for more. Julio Capster Neves just made a very clean pit stop. Not a change was made to the number three car. He's very happy and back out in third place. Jack? Meanwhile, Dan Weldon will pull his car down on the pit road for service. Weldon has showed an awful lot of patience, guys. Not a lot of talk from Chip Ganassi trying to counsel his driver. I guess that talk was done before Weldon got in the cockpit of the race car. They make a wing adjustment, look like about a full turn of front wing. All these cars are battling some grip issues down into the corners. Weldon is off and away. All right, so the pit cycle is just about complete, and it looks like when everything comes around, there's gonna be your battle for the race lead. It will be Scott Dixon trying to hold off young Marco Andretti. And when you got those fresh tires, the full load, whoa, pushes up. Marco on the high side, and he's gonna get the lead because Dixon had to lift. Dixon had so much understeer, you saw him fighting the wheel going into turn three, heard him get out of the throttle because he knew the front was gonna push up. Now the spotter, Marty, would have told him that Andretti is looking high, Andretti is looking high. He knew he had to get out of the throttle big time, otherwise he would have collected both of them going into the wall. Well, Marco Andretti is about to lead his first lap in three years here at Homestead, Miami. And just as you said that, Scott Dixon had a bit of a wiggle going through the turn there. So let's watch to see if maybe they made some changes on his car. And right now, it's not really agreeing with what he needs for him. Let's go back and show you this pass one more time. Now you see Dixon got a big wiggle there already. That's what slowed him up. And Marco just squeezes through. He's all the way up to the wall in the gray area. Not much grip up there, guys. There was almost a huge collision. Watch this, a little wiggle, not leaving much room 
for Marco Andretti and just gets through there in fine Andretti fashion. Got away with one there. Marco Andretti, how bad a year was it last year? 17 drivers ran all 17 races. That guy right there completed the least amount of laps, only 72% of them. He had 10 DNFs, including six crashes. He's in front right now. This Sports Center update is brought to you by redtag.ca, where Canada shops for great travel deals. We'll get you back to more racing in just a moment. Welcome inside the Sports Center newsroom as we get set for the next edition of the show, which comes your way in about one hour's time. Let's get you caught up now on some highlights. Habs trying to stretch their lead atop the East as they're facing the Leafs. Anton Strollman having none of it, though. He's a pair for Toronto, including a gorgeous end-to-end -end effort there. 2-1 Leafs in the third. Senators trying to clinch a playoff spot. They were facing the Bruins earlier today. This one all Boston. P.J. Axelson and Marco Sturm scored in the second. The Bruins cruised to a 4-0 win, and the Sens remain fifth in the East. Alex Ovechkin and the Caps continuing their push for the playoffs in Florida. Second period, 1-0 Capitals. Ovechkin slides one across for Mike Green. His 18th opens a two-goal Caps lead. That's where we stand in the third. Later on, huge game in the West. Flames hosting the Oilers. Edmonton two back of the eighth seed in the West. The road has a language all its own. Are your tires smart enough to translate? For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. What if your home could be more than just a place to live? Well, what if your home could actually help you do the things you've always wanted to do? With a BMO Bank of Montreal Homeowner Ready Line, your home can make it all possible by giving you a line of credit that grows as you pay off your home and funds that are accessible at any time without you ever having to refinance as long as you own your home. Whether it's for something unexpected or something you've been planning for, the only approval you'll need is your own. So anything is possible. Like knowing you'll be able to send your children to school or getting that dream cottage away from it all. Whatever your dreams are, the key to making them a reality is in your home. Start now by getting your information package. Come into one of our branches. Call us at 1-866-449-6877 or visit us online. That's right, we'll be on the street course. It's next Sunday, 2.30 Eastern. For more, just log on to ESPN.com. A lot of our transition drivers coming over will be uh, running strong there because they're used to running on the street courses and the road courses from the champ car days. Take a look at Marco Andretti, the youngster, in front of Scott Dixon by about seven tenths of a second right now. And uh, Jack, have you been able to figure out what uh, Dixon's issues were a few laps ago when he lost the lead? Actually, Marty, no major issues other than just wanting to be a bit conservative. I asked my colleague if there were any major concerns or problems with the car. He said no. And then he pointed to the number of laps that were left in the race. One thing I've learned by covering Mike Cole for almost two decades, he doesn't really care about the middle of the race. What he tries to do is build his book so that they are the best at the end of the race. One thing, Scott, you should know is they've begun to take advantage of that new Honda addition this season of being able to change their fuel mixture. They've been back and forth between fuel mixture two and fuel mixture three. That is Scott Dixon all evening. Could they be making some fuel for a run at the end? I don't know. Well, Jack, I have to laugh because it's just like management to say there was really no issues or no concerns when the driver's out there at 210 miles an hour with the car twitching underneath them. So for a driver, that's a bit of a moment or a bit of a concern for management. Well, maybe that's not, Marty. You saw the numbers on Ryan Hunter Ray right now running in seventh position. Let's get an update on the Ray Hell Letterman racer from uh, Vince Welch. He has Ryan Briscoe of Penske in front of him and Danica Patrick of AGR behind. Those are the three.
three players battling for this position, but Ryan Hunter Ray has been happy with the car. They made a front wing adjustment on the last stop, and he's really good on the long runs, which should pay him off at the end of the fuel window. Jack? Well, Vince Danica Patrick may have found herself on the front row with the problems during post-race, post-qualifying tech inspection, but now she finds herself still battling a car with heavy understeer. Now, calling the race tonight for Danica is Michael Andretti himself. They have added wing, added wing, continue to add wing. I just asked Michael, do you, has it cured the problem? He shrugged his shoulders and said, no, we're still chasing a severe understeer problem for Danica. Well, Danica right now in eighth is about 13 and a half seconds behind the race lead. There is a Michael Andretti, team owner of Andretti Green Racing. And uh, let's go back a little bit earlier in the race. We did manage to capture some of the radio conversation. interesting as we hear Kyle Moyer right there starting to speak with the driver the most important thing I think I've watched here this weekend is that there's a different line going around Homestead Miami Speedway this weekend Marty because last year all cars wanted to be on the low side were comfortable driving on the low side it seems like the racing line this year is mid-track or even a little bit higher now the uh, tires are a little bit different here this year we've got new left side tires with the same tires that we used here last year on the right hand side a little bit different sidewall construction on all of them and maybe the teams really haven't figured out these tires as of yet. That's uh, Mom Bev watching the monitor down in pit lane as her daughter continues to rotate around the track at 207 miles an hour. She went past the 23 of Milka Dunno, who's running in 15th. And now we switch our attention up to the battle for fourth. Elio Castroneves in the Team Penske machine in front of Tony Kanan as a uh, those two are starting to get a little bit close. That's Oriole Serbia in the five that they're going around. And is that kind of some moisture that we may have seen there for a bit? Or is, did the fog roll in all of a sudden? <laughs> Either way, if that's what the drivers see, he wouldn't be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Help! But I was talking about a line a moment ago. Watch how high these drivers are entering into the turns, going into the turn itself on the high side. And they're on the high side on the exit then, too. Tony Kanon just going on the low side now, fast in traffic. The most important thing as we watch backwards here, will he lose time as he's following the car in front in dirty traffic? Just up very high on the exit. Jack and Root, you have more on Tony Kanon? Yeah, Marty, the first of the AGR cars that has been adding wing and adding wing that is finding that it's beginning to pay off. I just checked with his, with his Tony Kanon's crew. They like their car now. It has settled down. It's got some grip, and they say that he can go back to racing. So let's see if there's more wing adjustments made with the other AGR cars. I don't think Marco Andretti needs any more wing, do you? Not right now. Marco flying 208 and change. His lead is almost a full second over Scott Dixon. Dan Weldon has fought his way back to third. Elio Castroneves is fourth. Tony Kanon rounds out your top five here at Homestead, Miami. Honda's unique rigid steel body structure. The Beast in Odyssey Pilot Ridgeline Element CRV. The trucks inside a truck. I'm about to buy my first stock online at E Trade Canada. Yeah! Trade equities from as low as $6.99. Thousands invest here every day at E Trade Canada. Start today with the confidence you get from Gillette Fusion Phenom. Fusion has five blades based closer together with less irritation than Mach 3 and a precision trimmer on the back. The best the man is. Singles or doubles? Singles? Doubles? Singles? <laughs> Doubles. Singles. Prepare to be torn. The Cheeseburger Lovers Deal at DQ. Two cheeseburgers for $2.99 or two meaty double cheeseburgers for $4.99. Do them. <sighs> 
I'm about to buy my first stock online at E-Trade Canada. Yeah! Trade equities from as low as $6.99. Thousands invest here every day at E-Trade Canada. Back here at Homestead Miami Speedway, we have reached the halfway point. If you're just uh, tuning in, we're working lap 101 of 200, the season opener of the IndyCar Series. And you're looking at 21-year-old Marco Andretti as he is out in front by 1.8 seconds over Scott Dixon. Dan Weldon, Tony Kanaan, Elio Castroneves rounds out your top five. We've had four different leaders with four lead changes. And if you're just joining us, I'm Marty Reed, along with Scott Goodyear, Jack Root, Rian Pedigo, and Vince Wells. We're so glad you're with us for this season opener of 2008. Let's get an update on Marco Andretti. Jack Root, you're up. From the time Marco Andretti came to this racetrack on Thursday afternoon for a PR function, a smile has been on this youngster's face. As I told you at the top of the show, why? Because the sophomore jinx is gone. He's a third-year driver. He started out patiently. The car had a slight bit of understeer. They added front wing, and now the rocket is riding Marco Andretti right into his first lead ever here at home at Miami Speedway in his third race. Directly behind him is Scott Dixon, who led most of the early going. But Dixon had a moment out on the racetrack, and that gave his crew pause and told him to be a bit conservative. Meanwhile, in the third spot is his teammate, who had the battle from all the way in the back after the car stepped out during qualifying. And that, of course, is Dan Weldon. Weldon now is moving his way up to solidly be behind his teammate, Scott Dixon. Tony Kanaan, who was a little racy early on, found himself now in the fourth position. They feel like they made a wing adjustment, and now TK likes his 7-Eleven ride, Brianne. Leo Castroneves currently in the fifth position, was just told by his strategist, Tim Sindrick, to play with his adjustment bars if it would help him to race a little bit lower on the track. Elio replied, it's stuck. And th that's the problem they're dealing with right now. His teammate, Ryan Briscoe, just behind him in position number six, is very happy with this car. One of the signs of a happy driver is that he's quiet in the cockpit, and Ryan has not said a word to race strategist Roger Penske since he pitted on lap 21. Vince? Ryan Hunter Ray for Ray Hall Letterman Racing is running in seventh, but he's at the tail end of the lead lap. And Scott Ripke, who's handling his strategy, is on the radio to Ryan, encouraging him, encouraging him to get with it. He said only 12.6 back to the leader. They know they're in threat of being lapped, and they don't want to lose this lead lap. Jack Aroot. And Danica Patrick, who started on the outside of the front row and faded quickly with severe understeer on her car, soldiers on. Down on the inside, that blue and black car, you see her there. They've made ring adjustments. The car started to step out and get loose when the Firestone tires began to run their cycle. Now she's working hard against Vitor Mira in the National Guard car. She seems, guys, to like down low more than up high. Uh, she better get up on the pony because uh, she's in jeopardy of going a lap down. She's the last car on the lead lap. Ninth is A.J. Foyt, the fourth. Vitor Mira is tenth. They're both a lap down. Ed Carpenter is eleventh. He is two laps down. While all this is going on, a familiar face to a lot of open wheel fans is now one of the co-owners of one of our teams, Jimmy Vassers with Vince Welch. His driver is Oriel Servia, and currently uh, Servia is running in 13th, but a couple of laps down, Jimmy, what's been the assessment of the way it's gone so far? <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's hard to hear, but it's about what we expected, you know, we're, we're going to be we're really behind on the ovals. So far, so good, we just wanted to roll it in the trailer when we get down to this, but, uh, be a long night. Marty? Well, he has nothing to be ashamed of. Oriole is in 12th place right now. He's running very solid laps uh, and doing exactly what the team wanted him to do. You know, when we spoke to him earlier in the week when they had the two test days here for those Champ Car World Series teams that were transitioning into the Indy Racing League, he seemed very confident, had a good grasp of what was going on, and he actually seemed like he was enjoying it. There were some drivers we spoke to when they're getting out of their cars, their eyes were as big as saucers. They were just like going, I can't believe the banking, the walls, the speed, 
just going to take a lot of a lot of these drivers here to be able to understand how to race on ovals. Remember, the Indy Racing League guys have been around here for many years, have the experience. It's not going to happen overnight, but I wouldn't discount them by the time we get to Indianapolis. Serbia in his 126th start in open wheel competition. There you see the stats on the 33-year-old. As uh, we are getting ready for our next round of pit stops. And if you remember the history of Homestead Miami Speedway, green flag pit stops can be trouble. Every year we seem to have a problem. In 05, it was Scott Dixon. In 2006, it was Tony Kanaan. And last year, it was Danica Patrick. So you don't want to miss the next round of pit stops. They're coming up here at Homestead Miami Speedway. We're about four laps until he comes in for his stop. And the problem with those pit stops, Marty, is that the incoming lane, the flat lane we just saw on the right-hand side, has no banking to it whatsoever. So when you're trying to come in and make up time underneath a green pit stop, it's sandy here, it's dirty. And like I said, flat, no banking, no grip. And if you make just a slight mistake of going a bit too quick, the car gets away from you and then you're a passenger. And Scott, three seconds behind our race leader, we should point out that Dan Weldon has gotten around his teammate, Scott Dixon. So Weldon, who started it all the way back in the back of this field is now moved up to second place here it is on replay he's going to look on the high side the number nine left hand side is Dixon's car now Dan Weldon's going to have to contend with some track at the traffic that's just up in front of him but he seems to be able to drive around the cars and accept the dirty air from the cars in front and it does not seem to affect the handling of his race car there is Dan, started 22nd. It's taken him 115 laps, but here he is in second place, and he's looking for his fourth straight win at this racetrack. If he does it, they ought to just rename the place Weldon Raceway. Uh, you know, 115, 16 laps, that's a lot of patience for Dan Weldon. He probably wanted to get it done in about 50, but it's the lap at the end that really counts, and the way that this is looking right now, after these next set of pit stops, uh, he makes a few more changes to his race car, and I bet you he's just gonna continue marching forward. Now, certainly Marco Andretti knows how fast Dan Weldon is, because they're gonna be telling him that on his radio. And I was just seeing the last couple of laps that Marco started to step up his speed a little bit, but Dan Weldon just went past the stripe and turned 208 miles an hour to Marco Andretti's 206. You wanna know how dominant Dan has been here? Well. He led 179 laps last year and has 359 total. That's more than double second place, Elio Castroneves. The margin as they come by the strike, 2.8 seconds the last time. Scott Dixon has now fallen five seconds behind the race leader. And here comes Marco Andretti on lap 118 of 200. This will not be enough to get him to the finish. So we have at least one more round of pit stops. And remember what we showed you, pit lane can be treacherous here. And here is your new race leader, Dan Weldon. So as he enters pit lane, let's send it down to Jackaroo. Marco Andretti and his team had hoped to maybe squeeze one or two more laps out, but all of a sudden they began to see on the dash that he was going to run out of fuel, so they pitted one lap early. Andretti will come onto pit road. They will put a half turn of front wing in the car. A little bit of a frustration on the part of, Mar of Marco. Hit that half turn. Meanwhile, Tony Kanan has pulled onto pit road and his crew goes to work. So far, they have not made any front wing adjustments since the last pit stop. It's just four Firestone tires and a full tank of ethanol for TK. Also coming in, several other cars, Oriole Serbia, Danica Patrick is in, and she uh, peeled off at eighth. Dan Weldon is your race leader right now as he stays out. There is Ryan Briscoe as he is into pit lane. Brianne? Ryan Briscoe pulling in. They expect no changes on the number six. Matt Johnson, the chief mechanic, full common collection as the six gets out nice and clean, guys. Scott Dixon has also peeled off, making his way down towards the far end of the pit lane. As he makes a stop, Jack Arute is there. Remember now, Scott Dixon did not make any changes to last pit stop. They played it conservative, though, after he had a big wiggle. Let's watch the front nose of the car and see if there is any change. No change there. And Scott Dixon is off and away. And guys, no discernible change there. Meanwhile, Dan Weldon, his, his crew is set up, ready to be serviced here. Weldon will pull on the pit road. This is the guy that has made the longest run. 35 gallons of ethanol. 
the four tires going on, the clock beginning to tick away. Remember, it's a football field every second they pitch. Weldon drops the hammer in heavy traffic. He'll go out to speed at 213. Let's go to Brianna. Elio Castroneves just pulling out of his shape stall to Ford. Firestone tires and filled back up with fuel. They are playing with fuel mixtures and it's playing off well right now. He's in second position. So with the second round of green flag pit stops now completed for all the race leaders, that is the man back up front. Marco Andretti will resume out in front of this field. We have eight total cars on the lead lap right now. As we work lap 123 up 200 here at Homestead Miami Speedway. The margin is about a second and a half. And now we check in with Danica Patrick. And uh, as we said, she went in eighth place. She came out in eighth place. But uh, we're getting word that uh, there was a bit of a problem on pit lane. Now we watch the fueler. There's a fueler's on the right hand side here. He'll get the count of when to come out. And the about, which actually slowed up Danica. Now she was maybe even looking in the mirror because she usually gets a signal coming from the radio and telling you no, when it's time to head off. And that could have been very close because that fueler had not been able to get that probe out. It would have turned around and dragged that thing down pit lane, Marty. Yeah, it could have dragged him along too. He could have gone for a ride he didn't want to take. Let's go back up front. There is your race leader, Marco Andretti. He has not had a lot of success in his prior two trips here to Homestead, Miami. But right now he's out front. With available 268 horsepower, ultra-low emissions, and Honda's reputation for safety, it's not just a powerful car, but a powerful statement. Introducing the all-new 2008 Accord from Honda. A new level of exhilaration. A new level of Accord. Introducing the D64 series, the slimmest, lightest Aquas ever. From the leading innovator in liquid crystal television, Sharp. I'm a new soul, I came to this strange world, hoping I could learn a bit about how to give and take. I'm a young soul in this very strange world Hoping I could learn a bit about what is true and fake Back here at Homestead Miami Speedway, we are under our second caution. You're looking at Milka Duno in the number 23 Dryer Reinbold Sicko Racing Dallara as uh, she and Ryan Briscoe got together in turn two. And we just saw the steering wheel be put out of the cockpit on the right hand side for Ryan Briscoe, so you know that he's moving inside the cockpit. Roger Penske, let's go back, take another look. So 23 of Milko Duna has lost it, and you know something? Oh. Six of Ryan Briscoe is just collected as her car starts to move up the racetrack, and unfortunately for Ryan Briscoe, his day is done also. We talked about Sam Hornis Jr. debuting here for Penske and winning in his very first attempt for Penske Racing, the first time a debuting driver had won in a race like that in the 40-year history of Penske Racing, but it will not happen for him here today. And both drivers are out of the car and appear to be A-OK. -okay. Brienne has caught up with Roger Penske. That's right, guys. Roger, it was an impressive run there for a while for Ryan. Explain uh, your impressions of your um, driver out there. Well, I think he did a great job. We were just trying to get a good race in here. It's unfortunate we were passing another car and they spun ahead of us and knocked us into the wall. But uh, I think he did a good job first time. Uh, it's unfortunate we don't bring her home, though. But uh, good racing out there. A lot of cars. Uh, a lot of inexperience, but uh, people are going to learn. I think we'll be in good shape when we get to the next race. We'll see you in St. Pete. Thank you. 
Well, and Roger still has one more chance to win this race because he's had good luck at season openers this year. Of course, Ryan Newman won the Daytona 500 for him, giving his first uh, 500 victory there. Then the ALMS team won at Sebring, season opener there for that series. So, Elio Castroneves, no pressure, buddy. I know, and you know the thing that I was amazed at, it was the first victory for Roger Penske at the Daytona 500. With the history of that team and all the victories that they have in all types of different racing, I would not have thought that. I would have lost the question on that one. Pit Road is still closed, so uh, we're going to go side by side again. As you see, Ryan Briscoe making the long walk. And uh, he did have a good run going, but it's over now. This TSN program is presented in high-definition television by JVC. JVC HD, the perfect experience. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. We're buying a new house. Are we ready? The neighborhood's totally up and coming. Get in if you can. Don't just buy a house for today. Buy for tomorrow. We discussed transferring your mortgage to help lower your regular payments. Now let's see what equity you've built so you're prepared to find your new home. Okay. Let's do it. CIBC works with you, so you're prepared for what matters. The 2008 B-Class, starting from 29.9, Take advantage of this and other great offers at the Spring Break event. Now on at your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Super Channel is more than great movies. It's award-winning series, docs that shock, concerts that rock. On six channels, two in razor-sharp HD and available on demand. Super Channel, it's something else. First step, first word. Live forever with the world's first full HD camcorder. Real as life. HD of Ariel. JVC. I think I'm going to the bathroom. Wanna go? I don't really have to go, but I'll keep you company. Where are you ladies going? You are what you eat, so make it a hungry man. With a pound of hearty food, you can eat like a man. It's good to be full. There are things going on in your house you may not know about. For instance, soft surfaces can hold on to odors and release them back into the room. But Febreze Fabric Refresher eliminates odors trapped in fabrics and leaves a light, fresh scent. It's a breath of fresh air. Ryan Briscoe, and that's what's left of the Team Penske machine as it's on the hook and heading back to the garage area. Marco Andretti, of course, uh, in front right now, working lap 131 of 200. Let's take a look at our Firestone lap leaders, and Scott Dixon still has led the most laps at 63, but Marco is closing in at 54. Tony Kanaan and Dan Weldon, 8 and 6, respectively. Remarkable, it's only our second caution because we actually thought that we would see a lot more cautions with a lot of the newcomers here tonight, Marty, but uh, it's been a very clean race. It absolutely has. In fact, uh, the fewest cautions in this race, three. It's happened five times, including last year. And as we said, we're working our second caution here on now lap 132. While they continue to clean up, that'll give us another chance to step aside. You still won't miss a thing here from Homestead, Miami. Honda's unique rigid steel body structure. The beast inside the beauty. Odyssey Pilot Ridgeline Element CRV. The trucks inside a truck. Honda, 
Treat yourself to our delicious steak and cheese sandwich. Subway, think fresh, eat fresh. Hold on there, bunny. I got something to tell you. Even the best of us get dull after a while. It's time to change your blade. All us fusion blades have an indicator strip. And when it fades to white, change your blade for a better shave. Whoa! Fresh blade, better shave. Men and women are different, so why use the same multivitamin? When men and women sometimes neglect their diet, there's one-a-day men's and women's formulas. Like one-a-day women's with more calcium, or like one-a-day men's with more selenium. One-a-day, tailored with more of what you want. JVC, the leader in HD technology, featuring LCD flat panel and HD ILA micro displays, is proud to present TSN HD. Here at Homestead Miami Speedway, five cars now on the lead lap, and Danica Patrick is not one of them, as uh, she is shown in sixth place. She just got lapped before that second caution flag came out, and it looks like Elio Castroneves, who is in fifth place, is going to be coming into pit lane. So, uh, Jack Aroot, let's send it your way. Some calculated gambles by the cars that have come onto pit road. A calculated gamble that will not be taken, though, by Marco Andretti. They wanted to make some major changes to make the car faster. He said, no, I want to leave it just the way it is, simply because it's so good in traffic. Brienne? Elio Castroneves pulling into his pit stall. Don't expect these tires to be replaced. It's a bit of a rush. <laughs> only fuel was put into the car. Elio's exact words were, let's just put fuel in and pray. Boy, I don't know if they can go that far. We're working lap 134, and it seems like everybody made about 50 laps. That would put yeah. in 180 for it. And if I still know my math, that's not 200. Well, I'm sure what they're looking at, they were about the, uh, Elliot was the last car on the lead lap, so maybe they're hoping for a few more yellow caution periods, and they're working for track position for the last 20 laps of the race. But you still have to have a fast enough car because the quick cars will find their way to the front but it's all going to come down just to strategy and where the yellows fall if they do. Well, uh, Vince Welch is caught up with Ryan Briscoe. Vince? Ryan, how was the car up to that point, and uh, what was the incident like to your perspective? Oh, <laughs> such a shame, you know. I was having such a great race. Everything was going exactly as we set out to do, and uh, we were making some really good pit stops, uh, good in and out laps, and the car was really solid right to the end of our stint. So. You know, I was just uh, taking my time out there and uh, working my way through traffic and made some good uh, passes out there. It was, uh, it was just going perfectly, you know. It's a shame, you know, I was at the wrong spot at the, wrong, at the wrong time when uh, Milka spun and uh, she collected me. But, hey, we'll move on and uh, we've got St. Petersburg next week and, and so on. There's been a lot of talk about the traffic. How has the traffic been and were you having any issues uh, during the, uh, the course of coming through that traffic? Uh, you know, I've been pretty impressed. You know, I think uh, a lot of those new teams that have come over, they haven't had time to really get their speeds up, so they're running a bit slower than we're used to. But, I mean, the drivers are doing a great job. They're really sticking to their line, making it easy for us to make decisions as we go by them. And uh, really, I've got no complaints. Thank you, Ryan. M Marty? All right, and there is his teammate, Elio Castroneves, as he is, uh, as we said, the last car on the lead lap, but he'll be back at the end of the line. And there is Roger Penske, hoping that he can uh, bring home the win for the team. But uh, he's going to have to work some strategy because the, the longest stint has been 53 laps. That was turned in by Dan Weldon. And there is Scott Dixon. Dixon is in third right now. And uh, let's get more from Jack Aroot. One of the things they talked to Scott Dixon during this break about was where is the best place to attack Marco Andretti. And you can be assured, too, that Dan Weldon was listening in as well. They feel like Andretti may be suspect on the high side. Marco, as we said, they wanted him to maybe make a change. He waved it off and said, no, the car's too comfortable. Let me update you on Marco's pit, uh, pit uh, friend right in front of him. That, of course, Danica Patrick. I asked Michael Andretti, why did you bring Danica in? He said, our strategy when you're a lap down is always go the opposite of the decision made by the leader. Never heard it put that way, but it makes sense, guys. Actually, that's a good kind. I've never heard it put that way either in all my years of motorsports. So I guess uh, you take a chance at it and maybe hope for the best on it because if she has more fuel in, maybe she can actually catch a yellow and stay out where the other ones have to uh, come in and pit. So we'll have to see if that strategy plays uh, out well for them. Well, while we've got a moment, let's talk about our GoDaddy.com trivia question. Here it is. Who won the first open-wheel oval race at Homestead Miami Speedway? The clock is ticking. Da, da, da. 
I, I can't do that. That's no. Terrible. That wasn't good, but I can tell you I now know the answer because you're holding that card up in front of me. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sorry. There's your answer. Jimmy Vassar back in 1996. And, uh, of course, Jimmy, uh, now part of KV Racing. And, you know, as you see, that's his car right there, Oriole Service, still out there. You want to know the first race ever held in the Miami area? Back in 1926, it was in Fulford, a one and a quarter mile board track. Peter DiPaolo won in a Duesenberg. He covered 300 miles at an average speed of 129 miles an hour. And, you know, the margin of victory was so close. It was a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> a board track, can you imagine racing on that? All right, let's reset this field for you because we have five cars on the lead lap. Marco Andretti is first, Dan Weldon is second, Scott Dixon third, Tony Kanan fourth, Elio Castroneves rounds out your top five, and that's the only five on the lead lap. Then it's Ryan hunter Ray, A.J. Foyt, Danica Patrick, Ed Carpenter, and Vitor Mira. That is your top ten. Well, and uh, as we take a look at Dan Weldon, as we work our way back, because you have some lap vehicles between Marco and Dan, it's not been a great weekend for Dan, at least when it came to qualifying. That's when the car is loose. He talked about that before. The back end just swings around and goes up towards the wall. And fortunately, he had some good luck here in the race, so obviously a great handling race car. You hear the spotters up in his ear right there, letting him know where to go. It's a team effort to get yourself to the front. And now he just has to continue to have patience here and find a way around Marco Andretti. Well, he started 22nd, and you notice the furthest back a Homestead winner has ever started. That was 12th. His teammate, Scott Dixon, did it in 2003. His deepest penetration was from 11th all the way to 1st back in 05. Now, remember, these guys did not come in in this, this yellow that we're having right now, so there's no changes on the race car. One thing they do get to use here on the restart is the new paddle shifts, which have been implemented into the Indy Racing League cars here this year. So the, no longer a stick shift inside the car itself. As we see Danica Patrick starting to come in the pit lane, probably just to top off before the yellow goes away. And not a bad decision, because now uh, we're working lap 139, so that means we have about 61 laps to go, and if we continue to run under yellow, we might get into the window. Bree? Danica came in, Danica came in just to top off on fuel, guys. It was a very quick stop, playing into the strategy Michael Andretti talked about. Marty Scott? All right, thank you uh, for the update, and we'll have one to go at the line this time. So we'll get back to green flag racing on about lap 140. Now, in the middle, if you see him, is uh, that's TJ. That's his dad in the silhouette of Danica's father. He, he doesn't stick in pit lane anymore. He gets too nervous. He gets too excited. And you ought to see him. He, he gets it real animated out there, even that far out. He's out in turn number two. So there is his daughter. 26 years old. You know, she just had her birthday earlier this week, and he was kidding her, and, and she says, stop it, I'm getting old. And he goes, old? He says, my, I can't even remember 26. Now you see her left hand was actually turning a knob on the steering. Watch her right there. Turning it back to full green fuel, so 100% fuel for the restart, and she will get directions from the team if they want her to lean the engine out. You can see that they're cranking up the wick as we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing. Danica trying to get caught back up to the pack. They're into turn number three. Marco Andretti, he won't hesitate. He'll get on the hammer early. Coming out of four, we're back to green flag racing. Here at Homestead, Miami Speedway, lap one, 42 of 200. Dixon side by side with Tony Kanan. That is a battle for third. Kanan's gonna take the position. So Dixon, the last two times we've gone back to green flag racing, that's when he's had his biggest problem. We talked about that. Sometimes the car does not work well for you after a restart. You have to wait for the tire pressures to come up and look at this, starting to punch in there for three or four wide, but Danica takes a low line and gets around all the traffic and continues marching forward. Danica shown in eighth position right now. Remember, she is one lap down, as is A.J. Foyt the fourth and Ryan hunter Ray. She's got a lot of work to do. Going to need at least another caution 
and a lot of other things to fall in her way to get back on the lead lap. Meanwhile, Marco Andretti has opened up a 1.2 second lead over second place Dan Weldon. And he just ran a lap of 209 miles an hour. Dan Weldon, 208 and a half. So it looks like Marco Andretti maybe has some speed in hand over Dan Weldon right now. And you see Tony Kanaan and Scott Dixon with lap vehicles in between. That's Ryan Hunter Ray in the ethanol machine that was directly behind Marco on the restart. Dixon on the high side. That's Ryan Hunter Ray underneath. On Ryan board. Hunter Ray's not making it very easy for him, that's for sure. Well, Ryan is the first car on a lap down. And uh, there is no NASCAR lucky dog, so I guarantee you that Scott Dixon's not real happy with Ryan. You say in this business, Marty, what goes around comes around. I'm not saying he's doing any blocking. He just wants to run as hard as he possibly can. But now his car moves up the racetrack, allowing Dixon to get underneath. But he just walks up the racetrack, almost slides into the back of him. Try this again. This is when Dixon's talking to himself. Come on, buddy, just give me a bit of space. You see, we talked about how the cars are sliding up here this year using all the road. Ryan Hunter Ray looks to go back on the inside. But Dixon certainly has a little bit more speed now. His goal is to try and chase down directly what's in front of him, which is Tony Kanaan. Yeah, Dixon's about two miles an hour faster on that last lap, and now he's starting to finally open up some space. So that'll allow him to go back into the chase for third place Tony Kanaan. He's got to make up about a half a second to get there. Meanwhile, up front, Marco Andretti has got 1.1 second lead over Dan Weldon. That is a, a lap vehicle that he is going around right now. And Ernesto Vizo, which is car number 33, which he actually got around pretty easily, and that's exactly what you want when you're leading the race itself. You hope that the driver in front sees you, and there again, the spotter's up on top of the stands to watch Michael Andretti watching his cars go around. The spotter's up on top of the stands will tell those drivers the fast cars coming from behind, keep your line. All right, next lap by 50 to go. That means we're in the window for the stop. So anytime a yellow comes out or anybody who wants to try and play some early strategy, although I don't think anybody will leave the track right now as long as uh, we're staying mean and green. Well, for Marco Andretti, he does not want to see a yellow because he has a fast race car. Seems to be able to get through traffic pretty easily. Although Andretti and Weldon right now are certainly running the same speeds, both 209 miles an hour on that last lap. Jackaroo. Scott, one of the reasons why that fuel, that speed may be precisely the same is Dan Weldon was just given the green light to go to fuel position one. Full rich to be able to drop the hammer, as they say. They felt that Marco Andretti was getting away. So forget about trying to make fuel. They are anticipating that both the leader and this guy, Dan Weldon, will have to make one final stop. I think it, whoever goes with an ethanol and go and no tires will probably end up being the winner. Unless, of course, we have a caution. Uh, and Scott, we should uh, explain what's going on as we watch uh, TK, Tony Kanaan, and Scott Dixon going back to being able to have adjustable fuel mixtures, which is different from last year. Last year, it was either a green position on the fuel knob on the steering wheel for the drivers, or if you went to a yellow position when you were running behind the pace car. Things are different now. Those, still those same positions are there, green and yellow, but there's three other positions to lean the engine out that gives you a little less fuel, a little less horsepower, a little less speed, which sounds like what Dan Weldon was doing is watch his great battle between Tony Kanaan now, number 11, and Scott Dixon. Remember, Kanan rubbed wheels earlier on with a three car of Elio Castro Nevis and they got away with that. Side by side at over 208 miles an hour, about three inches apart from time to time. You say you want to try this? Bring your A game. Kanan holds him off. That is Dan Weldon right in front as uh, those three are now pretty much in lockstep and they're only three quarters of a second behind Mark Andre. There's your top four. As 47 laps to go, this race is really starting to develop as four key players are in the mix. And with fifth place, Elio Castroneves, he's going to have to reel up about another six seconds to get in and make this a five-car battle. Right now, it is still Marco Andretti out in front. We're heading for the home stretch. You're gonna go side by side. You will not miss a thing. 
And now for today's top story, Chevrolet Extra Extra. Get in the driver's seat of select Chevrolet vehicles and GM will give you a no-charge sunroof. Plus, get 0% purchase financing for up to 72 months, so you'll roll into summer with style. For the whole story, see newspaper or visit your local Chevrolet dealer today for Extra Extra, the biggest news in the nation. Looks great. Mm, yeah. This roast beef is seasoned and done to perfection. Mm, it's so tender. Someone knows how to carve, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Look at these thick slices. Mm -hmm. I love these Sunday get-togethers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Isn't it Thursday? It'll make every day special. With thick, tender carvings, Tim Horton's new slow roast beef sandwich. Always fresh, always Tim Horton's. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas. Two. Rated mature. I'm about to buy my first stock online at E-Trade Canada. Yeah! Trade equities from as low as $6.99. Thousands invest here every day at E-Trade Canada. Welcome back to the XM Indy 300 here at Homestead, Miami. As we are working with 42 laps to go, you're looking at the battle for second place. Tony Kanaan has gotten around Dan Weldon all of a sudden. Kanaan's car has found a little bit of life. He's turned 211 miles an hour that last lap, so this longer run is certainly making his car work better for him. But don't forget that we still have one more fuel stop for all these leaders before the end of the race. Coming up on some slower traffic. That's your top four. Let's go back and show you the pass again. Tony goes down low in the 7-Eleven machine. And Tony had been working the high line just about all race long and just did a great surprise move to make the move underneath the cars. And that's sometimes what you have to do. Now he's setting his sights. Oh, oh and that. Marco Andretti chooses the wrong side. He thought he'd go around the high side and didn't get the job done. Had to get out of the throttle, and Tony Kanaan takes the lead. That was the 19 of Mario Moraes, and Moraes uh, is several laps down, just trying to stay out of everybody's way, but was unable to do it there. I'm sure Marco is not real thrilled right now, but Mario doing as best he can. you got to remember, this kid had never been on an oval, never raced at night, never had been over 200 miles an hour until he came here this week. And that's a tall order. He's doing a great job, and he really did the right thing because he left the high line, there, or left the low line, rather, and stayed high to give the cars all the room in the bottom. But Marco's been running his car on the top, so he just didn't think to go there. Okay, we mentioned that Scott Dixon doesn't seem to have a good car early in the run, but here he, if we get a few more laps in, he's putting pressure on back on his teammate, Dan Weldon, for third. Well, it's going to be interesting. It looks to me when we go on board with him that his car is under steering. He seems to turn a lot on the steering wheel right now. And you see how a car comes up towards the wall on the exit of the turn, and that's because it's pushing all the way up there on the exit of the corner itself, and he doesn't want to take his foot off the gas because he'll slow himself up. But he runs high on the entrance, down to the middle of the turn, and uses all the road on the exit. So I've got to say his car is not working very well for him right now. That one little bobble gave Tony Kanaan now a oh, three-quarters of a second lead over Marco Andretti, Dan Weldon, and Scott Dixon. Right now, Elio Castroneves is not a factor in fifth. He is 11 seconds back. Let's get more on Tony Kanaan. As you watch his wife, Danny, who gave birth to his bo baby boy, Lorenzo, over the offseason, Tony Kanaan should be pitting in approximately nine more laps. They don't anticipate making any major changes, guys. When they added the front wing to that car, that seemed to be the difference. Or was it when he collided with Elio Castroneves? Because since then, this car's been on fire. Well, he certainly is uh, very, very much an involved dad. If you know anything about Tony's history, he lost his father when he was very young. And he cherishes every moment with uh, young Leo as uh, with 35 laps to go. In fact, uh, we had a chance to talk to him about uh, being a dad. It made me a more, a better person, I would say, outside racing and make me it made me not think about racing 24 hours a day. When I get home, I can switch off and, and actually worry about him. But uh, once I'm here, I'm all about racing. 
And he is racing very well, thank you very much. In first place right now in front of his teammate, Marco Andretti. Then it's the Target Ganassi squad of Dan Weldon and Scott Dixon. And Elio Castroneves is falling further back. Take a look, you can see that Tony, last season on the mile and a half ovals, he won at Japan and Kentucky. Jack? So Marty, what was the best gift that Leo got as a baby gift? It was from teammate Danica Patrick. She had delivered in TK's team colors a full-blown go-kart. That go-kart is not a go-kart that you would give to a five-year-old or a six-year-old. We're talking about a go-kart that can go 100 miles an hour. <laughs> Earlier today, I saw TK, Danny, and the baby, and the baby was crying, and he said, well, we just signed a long-term contract with AGR, and like his dad, he's whining about it. <laughs> Great story. Uh, I want to see how long it'll be before Leo's in that go-kart, though. That'll be interesting. All right, there is Danny. As, uh, she is very interested in this. She's Tony Kanaan trying to lock down a win here. Remember, this is his adopted hometown here in the Miami area. Of course, the Brazilian with only 31 laps to go, trying to put the icing on this cake. Had to spend a few dollars to buy tickets for all the family and friends that were coming to the race. Maybe that's why he's driving so hard right now, so he can go pay that bill. Well, and his best here at Homestead Miami was third back in 05, and he was fifth last year. So, a chance to take home the trophy, the first place points, and all the money that goes with it. And we're waiting for what will happen as far as the next round, the final round of pit stops. When and who will blink first? And all of a sudden, take a look at all this lap traffic as that's uh, Darren Manning down low in the 14 car. Oriole server, let's go three wide. Hold your breath as we go into the corner. Everybody's okay. Now both those drivers that he was ready to come around would know that he was coming up quickly behind him because of the spotters that we spoke about before. But when Tony Kanaan sees two cars wide in front of him, he says, come on guys, just give me a little bit of space. But they're racing for position, so they don't want to get off the throttle and make too much room for him. That's Ernesto Vizo in the uh, 33 right in front of Tony. He'll go underneath and get around cleanly. Take a look at the battle for second as they are now in that same lap traffic as that is Darren Manning down low in the red, white, and blue 14 A.J. Foyt entry. And here comes the 10 car of Dan Weldon. And Tony Kanaan is going to be the first to blink. He has pulled off and is heading for pit lane with 27 laps to go this time by. So Marco Andretti will retake the lead. Weldon and Dixon will move up to second and third. And boy, this is the slowest moment of your racing day as he's coming your way, Jackaroot. You know, in the basketball tournament, the star players like to be at the free throw line to sink the game winner or the three-pointer. Well, for this crew, for Tony Kanan, they want to deliver the game winner with a flawless pitch stop. The clock is ticking, 35 gallons of ethanol flowing through the car. I believe that they short fuel, guys. They didn't take the full load. They don't need it. That's right. Only 26 laps to go, so uh, every second counts. Meanwhile, out on the track, there are your three leaders. Who's next to blink? It looks like Marco Andretti is going to come in. So Marco will relinquish the lead over to Dan Weldon. Remember, we talk about the treacherous pit in here, and everybody's been told about it over and over. Marco makes a clean entry into pit lane. Meanwhile, there is uh, Dan Weldon trying to get around Ernesto Vizo. And let's check in with Brianne Pettigo. A crowd of people have gathered around to watch the pit stop of Marco Andretti. No expected changes on this car, just fuel and tires. His birthday, his 21st birthday was last week, so it would be a wonderful birthday present for Marco Andretti to take home with tonight. And he's away, clean. Eight seconds seems like an eternity. Meanwhile, Dan Weldon stays out. The word we're hearing, yes, Scott Dixon has now pulled on to pit lane with 24 laps to go. Jack? After going 213 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour seems like a crawl, but the driver must hit the marks exactly. He does. Plenty of room to put the fuel in, add the tires. Again, look for a short fuel. That's exactly what they do. Scott Dixon is off the way. His final stop is in the books. 
And we hear that the uh, 10 camp has laid out their equipment for their final pit stop. But Dan Weldon right now trying to lay down a good hot lap or two. But he'll peel off at this point after going 208 and change the last circuit. That means Elio Castroneves will cycle into the race lead. And we are at a blistering pace here with only two cautions. 173 mile an hour average, including our two yellows. And uh, so a chance to actually catch your breath here as you come down pit lane. And hopefully nobody makes a mistake. There's your new race leader as he has got uh, Marco Andretti right behind him. Let's go to Jack. Dan Weldon came from the back of the field, promised his crew that he would pay them back for their hard work with a run to the front. He did just that. Now they're paying him back with an opportunity to take the fuel in the tire for a short amount of time. Did he do it, guys? Well, we'll have to wait and see on where he comes out with the rest of the lead. Marco Andretti going by Elio Castroneves, but you got to remember, Elio is a full lap ahead of everybody, so he is still the race leader until he pits. We're going to go side by side. This will be our last break before we take you to the checkered flag. Whoop. Well, now we're being told that we may stay because he may be pitting this lap. Waiting for the word to find out. They are laid out, so with Elio still in control until he makes his final stop. Also, still out there, remember, is Danica Patrick. Remember, she topped off, so she can go a few more laps. Meanwhile, here comes Elio Castroneves into pit lane. Showing right now, Tony Kanan has gotten around Danica Patrick, according to uh, official scoring, so We'll double check. And here is Elio's stop. Let's uh, go to Vince Welch. They talked about bringing Elio in at lap 185, but they decided to go ahead and bring him in a little bit earlier. Tim Sendrick talking him into his stop. They're going to go with the four tires and the fuel. They even had some consideration about just splashing the fuel at the end. Time stop, and off he goes with four fresh fire stones. All right, so he relinquishes the lead. We'll see where he comes out after the cycle. We can tell you that Tony Kanan is the race leader. Danica Patrick now is in second place. Remember, she's pitted a lot later than these guys the last time around during that yellow, so she can go a little longer on this run. We're going side by side. This spring, Canadians are finding reasons to run to Rona for the Ready, Set, Earn event. From March 26th to March 30th, you can triple your Air Miles Reward Miles on every purchase of $20 or more. Plus, earn hundreds of bonus Air Miles Reward Miles on over a thousand brand name products. The Ready, Set, Earn event. It's how to earn the most this spring. Rona, the Canadian how-to people. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas. Two. Rated mature. Singles or doubles? Singles? Doubles? Singles? <laughs> doubles. Singles. Prepare to be torn. The Cheeseburger Lovers Deal at DQ. Two cheeseburgers for $2.99 or two meaty double cheeseburgers for $4.99. Do them. He's back and he's on TSN. That's just beautiful. Sid the Kid and the Pens take on the Rangers in the first half of a home and home. Rangers, Penguins. 12.30 Eastern, it's the NHL on TSA. 4.30 Eastern on ESPN2 and ESPN2 HD. All right, Danica Patrick is making her final pit stop. That means Tony Kadan has a little more breathing room. Let's go to Brianne Pettigo. Danica is pulling into our pit box as we speak, changing the four Firestone tires, filling up with fuel, trying to get her back out as quickly as possible, keep her on that lead lap. Took a little bit longer to be so she peels back out of pit lane, coming back out onto the racetrack. We can tell you Tony Kanan's lead over now second place Scott Dixon, 2.7 seconds. Marco Andretti is third. He's about four seconds behind the leader. Dan Weldon is in fourth. Elio Castroneves is in fifth. And you get an idea of the mar margin back to Marco Andretti. And then we'll show on back. There goes Dan Weldon. 
Elio Castroneves is a lot further back. He's all the way on the front straightaway, so not going to be a player in the finish here unless we get a yellow that tightens up this field. Only 12 laps remaining. Tony Kanan, you see there, he's led 26 of the 187 laps. With the pace that Tony Kanan is setting right now, he is in jeopardy, or Elio Castroneves is in jeopardy. I've seen Tony Kanan come up into his mirrors very shortly. The pace of Tony really surprises me because he expected a lot out of qualifying. The car was a little slower, he said. Getting ready for the race, making some changes. He sat back and probably just made some changes during the pit stops to get his car better towards the end of the race, Marty, because he didn't seem to be really that strong as maybe some of the other drivers like Dixon at the very beginning of this race. But give it to him to work with the team, to make some changes. A very smart race driver. So you know he's got a lot on his plate this year with the departure of Dario Franchitti, so he really now has to work on the setups much by himself and really work with a couple of other drivers that don't really have as much experience as Dario did. That's true. He is the veteran at age 33. There is Scott Dixon, now 2.1 seconds behind. Dixon, of course, has led 63 laps tonight. Marco Andretti's actually led the most. He's back in third place, 85 laps up front for the 21-year-old. And as we showed you just a moment ago, uh, Tony Kanaan now has led 30 laps. Marco uh, is probably still wondering what he could have done differently on that lap traffic situation that he uh, had a little earlier, but uh, right now he's just gonna find some horsepower. And he actually had the fastest lap last time by 210 of our top three cars. Eight laps, seven time to go this next time by. And Again, there is Marco. He's going to have some lap traffic to work through. You know, on that pass with Marco, he was doing the right thing because he's been running the tall line up high as we have the yellow. And we got a car up into the wall right there. You see, uh, it's the 33 of Ernesto Vizo. So Vizo, has, and it looks like Tony Kanaan was yep. swept up in this as well. Our race leader, Tony Kanaan, is not going to win tonight in front of his adopted hometown fans of Miami. But I'll tell you what's going to happen here. It will be a shootout when we come down to it now. There again, we talk about the traffic up. Oh, he's spun in front of him. TK is just collected, much as we saw before with Milko Duno collecting the six of Ryan Briscoe. And Tony had nowhere to go, guys and did a great job not to really center punch. There's his Boy. wife looking on, and there is Vizo climbing out of the car. And that is what is left of Tony Kanaan's right front. Let's check in with Jack Aroot. Guys, George Close just asked his driver, can you stay out? He said, if it's under caution, they're continuing to limp around. And he says, stay out as long as you can. I was impressed, though, how calm Tony Kanaan was in the conversation back with his tactician. If I had a close encounter like that, I'd have been stuttering. Well, we, we knew that this was a possibility. I mean, we had all talked about it. Everybody had talked about it. And uh, unfortunately, it had happened here that involved the race leader. And I'm sure no one feels worse than Ernesto Vizo. I mean, he wasn't uh, trying to turn lap record times. He was just trying to do as best he could in uh, his first start here in the Indy Car Series. But uh, the end result is, if this goes back to green flag racing, there's no way TK can win. Of course, Scott Dixon saying, quick, get it cleaned up, because uh, we want to go back green so that I can pass and make the, the win. Let's get more from uh, Vince Welch. Mike Hall just came over the radio to Scott Dixon and said, don't get too close to Tony Kanaan. Uh, Kanaan has suspension problems. We don't want a piece to fall off and damage your car. So Scott Dixon will keep a little bit of distance between himself and Tony Kanaan here as they run under yellow. As you take a look at Mike Hall communicating with his driver, Scott Dixon, just told him you've got five to go. When that five to go, when we come for the restart, when Tony Kanaan will peel off and come into the pit lane, and Scott Dixon will lead. He'll have two lap cars between himself and the then second place driver, which will be Marco Andretti. 
Jack, uh, you've got more? Yeah, Marty, you may wonder why were they allowing Tony Kanaan to stay out there with a wounded race car? Well, Brian Barnhart made the call from topside. He said, look, if Tony can keep up the speed with the pace car, then he can stay out as long as he keeps that speed. Tony Kanaan, to drive home to the point, you notice, will be going to the high side and letting the pace car have a full view of just how he's able to keep up the speed. You see, he's trying to wiggle it. One to go at the line, and this is going to be heartbreak time for Tony Kanaan. Yeah, the Delphi safety crew has gotten the, the track cleaned up, and we are going to go back to green flag racing. And there'll be uh, four laps this time, so when we go one to go, it'll be three laps, and there's no way he can hang on. Well, he can't, but the reason why you ask he we want to stay out in the racetrack, well, he's going to try and stay out there because he's going to try and complete as many laps as possible so the people that are falling out of the race so far, he can actually finish in front of them because if he stops now and drops down five or six laps, it's going to position him further back. He might gain another two positions by hanging out as long as he possibly can. Fellas, Tony Kanaan just radioed to a spotter. Tell the guys behind me to go to the outside if they can. Go to the outside if they can. Let's watch. Well, they're coming down through turn two, so they have the whole back straightaway yet to go. All right, let's reset it for you. It's Tony Kanaan up front, at least momentarily. Then it'll be Scott Dixon right there in the number nine. Drop back to the 26 of Marco Andretti in third with two lap vehicles in front of him. It's Dan Weldon in the number 10 in fourth. And then Elio Castroneves, the last car on the lead lap. And we are back to green flag racing. And there's your lead change as Tony Kanaan can do nothing but watch as everybody goes by. The 11 will now be black flagged as he cannot maintain race pace. And meanwhile, Scott Dixon, who won here in 2003. Look at Kanaan. He is trying to stay out as best he can, but he's going to have to come in. There'll be two laps to go this time by. Marco Andretti in second place, Dan Weldon in third. And that is Marco right behind. Is there enough time for him to reel in Scott Dixon? Remember, Dixon has not been all that great when the tires have been cooled off when he's come back on the restarts, but it's a little bit different situation. They didn't stop, they didn't make the full change, didn't put a full load on. Well, I can assure you one thing, that their foot is gonna be flat on the gas for both those drivers. All the way around, there's no traffic in front. We'll have to see if you can actually even get enough closeness to the car in front as a white flag is drawn to even get a draft, but I don't think so, Marty. Mile and a half to go. Remember the last race last year at Chicago? It was this last lap that cost Scott Dixon the championship. Doesn't look like that's going to be the problem here on the season opener of 2008. Is this a taste of things to come? Well, it's definitely a great night for Marco Andretti. He's never done well at this track, has never finished. But coming out of four, Scott Dixon with his 11th career win. And second at Homestead.